Chapter 1. Our lives are often influenced by the experiences and emotions of our parents and grandparents. Mark Wolin begins this book with the story of how he lost his vision all of a sudden without any apparent physical reason. He went to the hospital one day complaining of a terrible headache, and he was diagnosed with central serous retinopathy, a condition that causes gradual loss of vision due to the accumulation of fluid behind the retina in the eye. The cause of this condition is unknown, and it has no effective treatment. Afraid that he was going to end up helpless, alone, and ruined, Mark walked away from his business, his relationships, and his family, and headed to Southeast Asia in search of spiritual healing. Little did he know that the answer to his problems lies in healing his relationship with his parents. After bouts of meditation and fasting, he was told by two gurus on different occasions to go home and make peace with his parents. Mark listened to the spiritual leaders, returned home, and made peace with his parents. Gradually, his fears dissipated, and he began to feel a sense of calm and healing. Today, to his ophthalmologist's total dismay, Mark's eyesight is 20-20, which is a total miracle given his condition. Medically, someone with the amount of scarring Mark has on his retina should be completely blind. Where we come from affects where we go, and that what sits unresolved in our past influences our present, Mark Wolin. In essence, the answer to our problems doesn't always lie in our own stories. Most of the time, the answer can be found in the stories of our parents, grandparents, and even our great-grandparents. The effects of trauma, studies show, can pass from one generation to the next. This phenomenon is known as inherited family trauma. Pain doesn't always diminish with time or dissolve on its own. Even if the person who suffered the trauma originally is long gone and forgotten, pieces of life experience, memory, and body sensation often live on, as if reaching out from the past to find resolution in the bodies and minds of those living in the present. In this summary, you will learn to identify inherited family patterns and how to bring an end to this generational cycle. Chapter 2. The effects of trauma often cascade from one generation to another. One of the common features of trauma is our inability to piece together what happens to us. Also, our thought processes get disorganized in such a way that we no longer recognize the memories as belonging to the original event. Instead, pieces of memory, dispersed as images, body sensations, and words, are stored in our unconscious and can later be activated by anything even remotely suggestive of the original experience. Our emotional turmoils are largely influenced by the history of traumatic events in our family and society. Recent studies in the field of psychotherapy have discovered that tragedies such as abandonment, suicide, and war, or the early death of a child, parent, or sibling, can send ripples of distress surging from one generation to the next. A professor of psychiatry and neuroscience at Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York and expert in PTSD, Rachel Yehuda, spent years examining the neurobiology of PTSD and Holocaust survivors and their children. Yehuda's study revealed that people are three times more likely to experience symptoms of PTSD if one of their parents had PTSD and, as a result, are likely to suffer from depression or anxiety. Descendants of trauma survivors bear the emotional and physical symptoms of traumas they have not directly experienced. According to cell biologist and Stanford scholar Bruce Lipton, a mother's emotions, such as fear, anger, love, and hope, can biochemically alter the genetic expression of her children. During pregnancy, a mother's blood is filled with a host of hormones and information signals produced by the emotions she experiences. 
These chemical signals activate certain receptor proteins in the cells, resulting in a cascade of physiologic, metabolic, and behavioral changes in the mother's body, as well as in the fetus. In a nutshell, the impact of trauma doesn't end with one person. It is usually generational. So in order to understand the mechanism behind patterns of trauma and suffering that repeat, it is important to explore at least three generations of family history. Chapter 3. Uncovering the spoken trigger event in our family history can stop us from reliving our ancestors' traumatic experiences. To gain insight into why we often find it difficult to articulate our thoughts when we're overwhelmed, we need to first understand how traumatic memories are stored. There are two main categories of long-term memory, declarative and non-declarative. Declarative memory, or explicit memory, is the ability to consciously recollect facts or events. This type of memory depends on language to organize and store information and experiences that will eventually become retrievable memories. Non-declarative, or implicit memory, on the other hand, operates without conscious recall. It lets us retrieve what we've already learned automatically without having to relearn the steps. These kinds of memories aren't always easy to describe in words. The brain stores traumatic experiences as implicit or non-declarative memory. When an event becomes so overwhelming that we can't speak, we cannot accurately declare the memory in story form, which requires language to do so. It's as though a flash flood is streaming through all our doors and windows at once, and we run out of the house instead of waiting around to put our experience into words. Without words, it's impossible for us to fully access our memory of the event. Fragments of the experience go unnamed and submerge into our unconscious, and as it turned out, the vast reservoir of our unconscious does not only contain our traumatic memory, but also the unresolved traumatic experiences of our ancestors. In this shared unconscious, we seem to re-experience fragments of an ancestor's memory and declare them as our own. Even though we're not exactly certain how an ancestor's unfinished business takes root inside us, it brings relief when such a link is made conscious. Mark Woolin. Until we root out the unspoken trigger event in our family history, we can constantly relive fear and other emotional problems that aren't ours, thinking they belong to us. Chapter 4. Your core language provides clues that lead to the origin of unresolved trauma. When fragments of past traumatic experiences play out inside us, they leave clues behind. These clues, usually in the form of emotionally charged words and sentences revealing our deepest fears, often link us back to unresolved traumas. And as mentioned earlier, these traumas might not even be ours. Mark Wolin calls these expressions of trauma core language. The intense words you use to describe your deepest fears are your core language. This language also appears in the complaints you have about your health, your work, your relationships, and other life situations. Basically, it's the fallout from the traumatic event that took place in your early childhood or family history. Being aware of our core language is an essential step toward healing trauma. The emotionally charged words of our core language are keys to non-declarative memories that live both in our bodies and in the body of our family system. Core language helps us piece together the events and experiences that could not be integrated or even remembered. 
When we gather enough of these fragments in our consciousness, we start to create a story that opens our eyes to what might have happened to us or to our family members. The memories, emotions, and sensations that may have been haunting us our entire lives start to make sense to us. Once we discover their origin in the past, in our trauma, or in a family trauma, we can stop living them as though they have a place in the present. Did you know? Your core language can also be expressed in nonverbal ways, such as physical sensations, behaviors, impulses, emotions, and even the symptoms of an ailment. Chapter 5. Uncovering and facing your fears is an essential part of your healing process. Your core language has four main elements. Your core complaint your core descriptors, your core sentence, your core trauma. Each of these parts are a tool for investigating your family history and getting to know the source of your inherited trauma. Your core complaint, according to Mark Wolin, is the core language that describes your deepest worry, struggle, or complaint. It describes the biggest thing you're most terrified of at the moment. For instance, here is one of Mark's clients. Mary's core complaints. I don't fit in. I feel like I don't belong. I feel like I'm invisible. Nobody sees me. I feel like I'm observing life, but not in it. To pinpoint your core complaint, take a moment to reflect on the problem that is most pressing in your life right now. It might be an issue with your relationship, your health, your job, whatever it is that disrupts your sense of peace, safety, and well-being. What is the deepest issue you want to heal? Maybe it's a feeling you've had all your life. Write it down in your journal. Once you're aware of your core complaint, the next step is to identify your core sentence, the core language that describes your worst fear. Core sentences sound like this. I'll hurt my child. I'll lose my family. I'll lose control. I'll be hated. Here is a simple exercise to help you discover your core sentence. What's your worst fear, the worst thing that could ever happen to you? Write it down in your journal. Take a moment to reflect on what you've written, then answer this question. If that happened, then what? What would be the worst part of that? If you wrote the sentence, I could die, for instance, take it a little further. And if that happened, what would be the worst part of that? My family would be without me, and everyone will forget about me. To overcome your fear, you must start by finding its source and uncovering it. Your core sentence, the sentence that describes your worst fear, is the most direct path to revealing unresolved family trauma. It guides you to the source of your fear, and once the source is in sight, the fear begins to wane. In a similar vein, your core complaint can serve as a guide to something that's still unresolved. When you stop to examine your complaint, the unresolved issues can rise to the surface, facilitating your healing process. Chapter 6 Use your greatest fear to unearth the source of your inherited trauma. Now that you've identified your core complaint and core sentence, the next thing is to pinpoint your core descriptor, the core language that describes your biological father and mother. Take a moment to describe your mother when you were growing up. What was your mother like when you were growing up? Was she warm, loving, cold, distant? Grab your notebook and describe her with the first words that come to mind. Once you're done, proceed to the same thing for your father. How would you describe him? Was he kind, harsh, critical? Was he always there for you? Write everything down. Here's an example of how your core descriptors should sound like. Mom was kind, fragile, caring, depressed, preoccupied, and vacant. I blame her for not being there for me. 
I felt like I had to take care of her. Dad was funny, lonely, distant, away a lot, and hardworking. I blame him for not being around. These descriptors gave us an insight into our unconscious feelings. They can reveal feelings about our parents that we didn't even know we hold. And once these feelings are out in the open, we can start working on healing our relationship with our parents. Mark Wolin strongly recommends that you make peace with your parents. Doing so will give you inner peace and allow for harmony to spread into the coming generations. This might seem difficult or impossible at first, but healing our connection with our parents brings great rewards, including experiencing positive outcomes in our health, relationships, and productivity. The feelings we hold about our parents are a doorway into ourselves. Mark Wolin Your next task is to identify your core trauma, the event or events in your family that underlie your core language. You can unearth your core trauma through a bridging question or a genogram. A bridging question is a question that links the present to the past. For instance, if your greatest fear is that you might lose a child, a bridging question might be, did anyone in your family blame themselves for not keeping a child safe? Or, did anyone in your family hold themselves responsible for a child's death? Using a genogram to unearth your trauma involves creating a family tree. Trace your family back three or four generations and construct a diagram that includes everyone up to your great-grandparents. Next to each family member, make annotations of the significant trauma that person experienced. Traumatic events include the loss of a child, exclusion from the family, suicide, or participation in a holocaust. Now, look at everyone in your family system. Is there anyone on the list who might have had a reason to feel the same way you do? Chapter 7. Your personal healing sentences will help you break the cycle of inherited trauma. Now that you've identified the source of your trauma and you've recognized that most of the thoughts, emotions, feelings, and behaviors you've been carrying around do not originate with you, it's time to break the generational cycle. A good place to start is by taking a conscious action to acknowledge the traumatic event and the people involved. To do this, you have to create personal healing sentences and have a conversation internally or with a family member, either in person or through visualization. Your words carry a significant amount of power. If you say negative things such as, I'll fail no matter how hard I try, or I'll never catch a break, all the time, it will eventually become your reality. These negative beliefs can create a blueprint for how your life unfolds, limiting the way you take in new experiences and affecting your healing process. Healing sentences liberate you from your trauma by instilling positive feelings in you. Your healing sentences help you acknowledge the tragic event of the past that is now the source of your pain and your parents or ancestors who suffered it originally. One of Mark Woolen's clients who discovered that she had been unconsciously sharing her mother and grandmother's relationship failures and unhappiness said these sentences, Please, Mom, give me your blessing to be happy with my husband, even when you couldn't find happiness with Dad. To honor you and Dad, I'll relish my love with my spouse, so that the two of you can see that things go well for me. Your own healing sentence can go like this. I promise to start living my life to the fullest from now on and stop reliving what happened to you. Or perhaps, I'll cherish the life you gave me by doing something meaningful with it. The right words can liberate us from unconscious family bonds and break the cycle of generational trauma. Mark Wolin Ceremonial practices and healing actions can also help. 
For instance, if you've discovered that you are re-experiencing your grandfather's guilt, you can put his photo on your desk. Every time you look at the picture, breathe out and visualize leaving the guilt feelings with your grandfather. As you repeat this ritual, you'll start to feel lighter and freer. You can also light a candle for an ancestor who died tragically or write a letter to a family member with whom you've become estranged. Conclusion Do not assume the trauma or emotional turmoil you're currently going through is your fault or that something is wrong with you. The situation might have been genetically and emotionally passed down from your parents or any of your relatives, even if they've been dead for a long time. Recent studies in the field of psychotherapy have discovered that most of our emotional turmoils are largely influenced by the history of traumatic events in our family and society. Tragedies such as abandonment, suicide, and war, or the early death of a child, parent, or sibling can send ripples of distress surging from one generation to the next. The impact of trauma is usually generational. It doesn't just end with one person. Pain doesn't always decrease with time. Even if the person who suffered the trauma originally is long gone and forgotten, pieces of life experience, memory, and body sensation often live on, as if reaching out from the past to find resolution in the bodies and minds of those living in the present. Descendants of trauma survivors, for instance, have been shown to bear the emotional and physical symptoms of traumas they have not directly experienced. Fortunately, you can use Mark Wolin's core language approach to locate the source of your trauma and eliminate it once and for all. Following the method as highlighted in this summary, you will be able to break the cycle of inherited trauma and stop it from spreading to the next generation. Try this. You've identified your core sentence as well as other elements of your core language. Right now, try to create your personal healing sentences. Acknowledge the source of your trauma and have a healing conversation with the member of your family that initially experienced the trauma. If it's not possible to do this in person, for instance, if the person is deceased, try to have the conversation through visualization. Stand up to your greatest fear and watch it dissipate, leaving you with a sense of peace and calm.